the Bible from beginning to end using the 20 C's. This is just a big help to kind of kind of follow along and, and uh, be able to stay on track. If you need one of those handouts, would you raise your hand? And uh, we want to make sure that everyone gets those. And uh, it'll be a big help to you to follow along because we're going to start moving forward very rapidly. And uh, I am enjoying this study with you. I really am. And uh, I'm just learning so much and uh, through doing a bunch of research and, and uh, a bunch of history and, and things like that. And uh, I'm just really, really enjoying this study. And, and uh, uh, we do something at our house, and uh, I don't want to take too long kind of setting this up. But um, every, uh, at every meal, um, we, we do a Bible game. And uh, it, it's a Bible game where uh, you ask a question and uh, you get 20 chances to answer the question. And tw- it goes from 20 to 1. And uh, if it starts off at 20, 20 is the hardest. And, of course, by the time it gets to 1, it's, uh, it's really easy. Everyone knows the answer, or should anyway. And, uh, uh, or something that's very familiar that most people would know about the question. And uh, it's a person, place, or thing. And so uh, when you read the question, it, you have to say, well, this is a person, place, or thing. So it already gets your um, thought processes going, and then it gives you references. And so what we do at our dinner table uh, is we, uh, Melissa actually reads the question, because I want to answer. I don't want to read it. I want to guess, and uh, I want to win. Actually, that's, that's the truth. Uh, you know, we're so competitive. And uh, my, my kid's like, no, you're going to know the answer. And uh, my goal is to always get it on number, or at least... Uh, number before 18. That's my goal is to try to answer it before 18. And what has been so funny is that going through this series, there has been question after question after question that is dealing with all the things that we have talked about. And, uh, and there's this other game called Bible Trivia that we have. And uh, it, it, looks like an old, it looks like an old Bible. It's about this big. and It's, a, it's got a bunch of questions. They're super hard. But anyway, my whole point in telling you all that is not that you probably really care or that I'm trying to bore you to death. The point is, is that this stuff will help you. It'll help you learn. It'll help you grow in the Word of God. And even for me, I have room to grow. I want to grow. And I'm so glad that you're here tonight because I believe that you're here tonight because you want to grow. Amen? Come on now. I've got to say amen a little louder. Or the people on the internet and watching this by, or listening to this are going to go... Man, they're not behind that guy. Amen? Amen? Okay, good. I'm glad you're here to learn. So, if you would, grab your Bibles, go to Exodus, and uh, we're going to uh, speed forward very quickly. We have uh, studied, uh, really, uh, seven C's already, and we're on the seventh C, which is camp. And so, at the very beginning of your handout, uh, there are several things that we covered, uh, but we're going to jump right in here. And on your handout, last week... We learned something very quickly and uh, something very significant, and that was the giving of God's law. We learned that God gave his law, and we learned that it was uh, 613 uh, really uh, laws, and it consisted of 10 commandments. We've learned that, and uh, we learned that uh, Moses uh, got the 10 commandments. Does anybody know from what mountain? Sinai, that's right. And uh, from we know that uh, as they traveled, they left Egypt. Uh, the Israelites, we know that they went into bondage. Uh, we know that they were enslaved for over 400 years. And, uh, and then God delivered them out of Egypt. And what did God use? He used 10 things. Uh, what were they? You don't have to name them all. But what do we call them? What does the Bible call them? That God used this to get Pharaoh to release his people. What was it? Yeah, they weren't good, were they, folks? Men and things were nasty, and uh, it wasn't good, and it kind of sealed the deal when God said that every firstborn of every child that did not have blood applied to the post of their door, of their homes, when the death angel came through, he would take every boy, firstborn child. And Pharaoh's son died, didn't he? We learned that. Isn't it amazing that Pharaoh, through all the baby boys in the river, and yet one of the plagues, God says, I'll 
take a life. He says, I'm the giver of life. I'm the taker of life. I'll do something, but I also will do it through a picture of this. I just, I'm not just killing people. I'm wanting to bring life to people. And if the blood is applied, life will be spared. I mean, it's a beautiful picture. And uh, so we learned that God gave his law, and uh, we learned that he gave ten commandments, and the Bible is clear, and we know this from the ten commandments. How many of you have ever kept the ten commandments total? Raise your hand. How many of you ever kept one of the ten commandments in, to in total entirety? You've kept at least, you've done at least once. Raise your hand. None of us, huh? We, none of us have even kept one of the Ten Commandments in its entirety, have we? You know what that leaves us? Does it leave us innocent or guilty? Guilty. The law was not meant to justify you or I. It wasn't meant to justify anyone before God. And say, well, what was it to do? It was meant to bring the knowledge of sin. It was meant to uh, bring mankind guilty before God so they would see their need for a Savior. And it was to show people their sinfulness that they might turn in faith to God's provision, which is Jesus Christ. The law has a purpose, and the Bible says to let it have its perfect work. And so, yes, the law has a purpose, but it is not to justify you. And that's very clear. And isn't it amazing how people want to live by a religious system or live by a law system when it's very obvious none of us can do it? None of us can do it. But God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, as the Bible says, as our propitiation for our sins. So we're thank, we just thank the Lord for that. So we learned last time the giving of God's law, but in your handout you'll see a second line, and that's the construction of God's tabernacle. We talked about that last week, even showed pictures. If you've missed all that, you can go online and listen to that. You can get the handout uh, from last week. But I told you that it was 75 feet in width. It was 150 feet in length. And the outer court of it was 60 pillars uh, that was seven and a half feet high. Uh, the entrance was facing east and the gate going in was 30 feet, 30 feet wide. Told you that the Holy of Holies and explained that to you a little bit. That was 48 pillars that were 27 inches wide and four inches thick and 15 feet tall. Man, that thing was something. And uh, of course we know that those, uh, it was covered by four curtains and um, covered by fine linen, goat hair, ram skin, and then ending up with badger skin. And, and of course we understand the purpose of the tabernacle is to serve as a temporary meeting place between God and His people. Now, let's quickly pick up. That was a little bit of review. And uh, let's look at tonight the rebellion and wandering of Israel. Okay? So we're quickly leaving Exodus. I think I told you to go to Exodus. Did I tell you to go to Exodus 15? All right. Well... Leave there and go to Numbers now, okay? If you would, go to Numbers. All right. Your, your handout has a typo that says number 13, right? That should have an S on it, okay? So if you would, add that. Numbers 13. Now, just go ahead and keep writing. We know that um, after giving them their law, in your handout, God's plan was to lead the nation of Israel into their promised land and to raise them up as a light to all other nations that they may know the true God. Okay? That they may know the true God. And so if you would, bring up that first map. And if you look up here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this pointer on the screen. Uh, it gets lost in there. But, uh, but anyway, if you'll notice here, this of course is Egypt. I hope... I'm on the left side over here, folks. I'll move over here a little bit if that helps you. But uh, you'll notice this is Egypt. Uh, they left the Egypt out of bondage. We know that they crossed the Red Sea. I told you that uh, that, that uh, was uh, 500 feet deep. Okay, and so that was a miraculous event here. And they cross it, and if you'll notice their journey right here, and uh, they go down to Mount Sinai, and of course, that's where they received the what? Yes, the Ten Commandments. We just talked about it. Are you lost? Are you with me, folks? They got the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai, all right? And uh, so right here, they travel down to here, and then they're supposed to go right up on here and go right to the Promised Land. And uh, we'll talk about the 12 spies in just a minute and all that good stuff. But notice this trek. Now, 
if, if you'll notice something, they were absolutely supposed to go here. Then they were supposed to go here and take the land. Now, Canaan is made up of seven nations. I'll get to that in a minute, show you a map or show you a chart, tell you all about that in just a moment. But they, they had specific instructions of what they were to do. And uh, they leave Egypt. They leave the Goshen area, which is up here, okay? Up here where you see the Nile Delta up on the left-hand side up here. Uh, this is where, where Goshen is. And they were to leave that area. They were to cross the Red Sea and go to Midian where Moses had fled. Over in here, where you see Mount Sinai, right up under here, this is pointing to Mount Sinai, but right over here is where Midian was. Over here, right up under here. All right? And I know the folks who are watching this and all that can't see that, but that's all right. And uh, I, if, they'll, if they'll go to a map on the web, or, and uh, they can see that. But then they were supposed to go to Mount Sinai in Arabia, where they received the Ten Commandments. But... And they were supposed to go to Kadesh Barnea. Now, if you'll bring up the second map, forget about the red line. Don't even pay attention to the red line. It'll just confuse you. Don't worry about that. That's for something else. Do you see right here in the middle, under Wilderness of Zen, you see Kadesh? Do you see that, folks? Yes or no? Okay. My pointer is up here on the ceiling. It's going down. Boom. It's on Kadesh. All right? Right above Wilderness of Paran. They were, to spo they were to go to Kadesh Barnea, and you see, what the plan was that they were to go up there on an 11-day journey. Between there is the wilderness region. You can see all that. It's all up here. And uh, wilderness of Shur, uh, wilderness of Paran, you can see all that. And so you're starting to get a, a picture of how vast of an area they were to cover, but however, what they were supposed to do. And between there is the wilderness region, but then right above it, over here to the right, is the promised land. It's not that far. And so if you would show the third, third land. This, uh, this, is even, this is probably worse. It looked good on the screen, but you, you guys probably can't see this. Kadesh Barnea. And uh, you'll see a little bit of uh, uh, a line here. Mount Sinai. Actually, that, that, is, um, that is wrong. They went to the land of Midian. Okay, then, then back and then back up. And so uh, notice, though... Uh, up here, they're just supposed to trek right back up to the right and go almost out of the screen there to the promised land. They were to, what they were supposed to do, they were supposed to attack the pagan people there. God gave them uh, specific instructions. Go. I mean, you've been in Egypt over 400 years. They went in 70 people. How many came out of Egypt? How many? Do you remember? Two million. Okay, so two million people now. God tells them, go to the pagan areas up here in Kadesh Barnea, and I want you to go up there, and I want you to attack those people. Go up to the promised land, excuse me. And I want you to go up there, and I want you to take the land. And he gives them specific instructions. And he tells them, and you probably know the story and how it goes, they were supposed to send 12 spies into the land to give a report. Now, let me show you the last map of this for tonight. This is back to the first map. But look at this. They were supposed to send 12 spies in. They're in Kadesh Barnea. Whoop! Go to Canaan. Send 12 spies. Just send 12 in. Now, why do you think he sent 12 spies in? Why? What, what does the Bible tell us why? Take a guess. 12 tribes. Okay, even your guess was right. But now you know it's real biblical. Okay, so let's not guess. Uh, he sent 12 spies in to represent how what? The 12 what? Tribes of Israel, that's right. And, and so God tells them, you send 12 guys in there, and you send them in to spy off the land. But something happens. These 12 spies represent the 12 tribes of Israel. They come back with a discouraging report. There's some big men up there. Them boys are corn fed. Fed. Believe in boys are from West Virginia. I don't know if we can take them. It was an evil report. Now look at Numbers 13 and look at verse 28. You know the beauty about these series is that it doesn't matter how long it takes. You just go through some stuff and learn some stuff. That's what I love about this. Look at Numbers 13. You should be there. And look at verse 28. 
Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And then, and then look at verse 31 through 33, if you would. Just jump down there. But the men that went up with him said, We not be able to go up against these people. for They are stronger than we. We ain't going to be able to do it. And they brought up an evil report of the land. Now, stop right there. Look up here. Did God tell them to take the land, yes or no? Could they take the land, yes or no? Now, why do you think he sent 12 spies in? I, all right, I know for one he tried. But, all right, we know that. We know what they represent. But why did God do it? I want you to see what I'm going to do. Man, this is a faith issue. But they went in there like, <laughs> some big boys up there. They not only talk about how big the men are, they talk about how big the grapes are. I mean, you know that you've got problems when you talk about, you know, the vine fruit. I mean, and, and they go in there and they start talking about this. And look, verse 32. He says, okay, and they brought up an evil report of the land, which had searched a ton of the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the men that we saw in are men of great stature. They're big boys. Man, they wear huskies. Husky breeches. They're big. And we saw the giants. Now they call them giants. Look at that. The sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as what? Grasshoppers. And so were we or so we were in their sight look man they were giants to us and we were grasshoppers now were these men big yes or no yes but they painted a picture god we heard you but we want to bring about the report i just don't think we can do it i mean this isn't looking good and in your handout but upon arriving at kadesh barnea where they were Israel exhibited total unbelief in their God and refused to obey God's command to enter in the land. God told them they were going to get it. This is your promised land, folks. This is your land, Israel, nation of Israel. I want you to go and take the land. I want you to go send 12 spies. They go and do it, and they go, no, we're not doing it. We can't do it. We can't do it. They're big. We're small. We're grasshoppers. They're big guys. Number one, God already promised you the land, and now all you're doing is exhibiting unbelief. Now look at Numbers 14, and look at verse 1. And all of the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. They're boohooing over the big men. They're, they're weeping about this. Look at And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation is telling them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in this wilderness? Oh, my, 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 my. How much are they trusting God right now? How much? None. Zero. You can't even say a little here. They are so distrusting Him, they're living in anxiety and worry and stressing about it. And are saying, contemplating, it would have been better if we died. Now, they didn't have no pills to pop back then, folks, okay? All right? Right? So, I mean, look, it, it's just, it's terrible. Verse 3, And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? What is God doing? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt, verse 4, and they said one to another, let us make a captain, let us return to Egypt. We need a new boss. We need a new leader. Uh, Moses, Aaron, you're fired. You've been kicked to the curb, man. Can you see what's happening? And when we get to Judges, you know, you're just going to see a complete cycle. And I hope you're getting this, that from beginning to even up to this point, you just see a continued cycle. 
And this continued cycle is just trust the Lord, trust the Lord, trust the Lord, trust the Lord. He knows what's best. And here, they are saying, we'd be better off back in Egypt. We'd be better, maybe if we even died in the wilderness here. And I tell you what, Moses, Aaron, you're out. We're going to get a new boss. And we're going to get a captain. So we're going to take up a vote. We're going to get a, 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 a committee together, and we're going to go back to Egypt. I'm like, are you kidding me? This place is unbelievable. These people are doing some unbelievable stuff. They're wanting to go back to a place that they were slaves for over 400 years. You'd think that would ring a bell. You'd think you'd forget about 400 years of slavery overnight. They seem to have. They're wanting to go back to a place that they were a slave for over 400 years. They're going to back to a place where their baby boys were thrown into a river. They're wanting to go back to a place that they were beaten, they were mistreated. Uh, they want to go back there. Folks, I have to be honest with you. It's got God really mad here. He's not happy. And from that, in your handout, God's punishment from this was that Israel would be forced to wander aimlessly in the wilderness for the next 40 years until all the adults over 20 years old died. Incredible. Okay, you don't want to do it my way? That's fine. How about taking a trip in the wilderness and no one over 20 will see the promised land? Look at Numbers 14. Look at verse 29. Your, look, look at this. This is strong stuff, man. You, 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 if, you, if people tell you the Bible is boring, they don't read this book. You just look at them and go, you talking about this book, this Bible? Or are you talking about something you read because this bible's interesting it's incredible look at verse 29 How, your carcasses folks that's just <laughs> that's that's just funny to me i mean i mean the bible's interesting your carcasses what if we just started preaching on sunday morning and i start off folks just want you to bow your head lord there are carcasses this morning you think people would be peeking? They'd be like, man, I think I'd get their attention. He says, shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were, were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless shall you not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein and save Caleb and the son of Jephunneh. And Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye should be a prey, said should be a prey, excuse me, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness, after the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Woo! You broke a contract, man, and God's calling it in. Your carcasses. You won't see the promised land. God's mad. Why did they wander for 20 year, 40 years? The spies were in the land spying for 40 days. For each day, God said, they will wander in the wilderness the same. They will wander one year for each day. No one over 20 years old will enter the promised land. Can you imagine this? What if you were 20?
You're not getting another birthday, my friend. You're going to kick up daisies. They won't be singing happy birthday. Can you imagine all the funerals? Can you imagine all the death? Can you imagine everyone who's 20 and older and they get this from God? Life's precious, isn't it, folks? It's precious. However, God will take their children in to possess the land. He said that. Say, what's the exception? Well, in your handout, the only exception of this was Joshua and Caleb. So write that in. He said, except for Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because these were men of great faith. These were men of great faith. Now, let me ask you a question. How many spies went into Canaan? How many? Twelve. Do you know that song? Twelve men went into spy in Canaan. Ten were bad and two were good. Do you know that song? What did they see when they spied in Canaan? Ten were bad and two were good. Some saw giants strong and tall. Some saw grapes and clusters fall. Some saw God was in it all. Ten were bad and two were good. Ta-da! Next week, you're going to sing it. Just kidding. Twelve went in. Ten came back. Said, we can't do it. They're too big. They're too strong. Now, I want you to look at numbers. You're in 14 still. Look at verse 6. Want to know why? It's Joshua and Caleb. Look what the Bible says. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. These are the two of the twelve. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Interesting. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Man, you got to love Joshua and Caleb. They said, hey, you cowards, man up. God's with us. God's for us. If God said he'll give it to us, that's exactly what he'll do. And they're like, man, let's do this. Let's go into a land. They're our bread. We'll take it. We don't care how big they are. And God said, only these two men and those 20 and under will enter the land now. You know, I'm reminded of this, and I said this last week or the week before. Folks, the crowd's not always right. Ten said, we can't do it. The crowd said, let's go back to Egypt and have the sword fall. Let's just fall on the sword. Let's just die. But Joshua and Caleb said, man, we can take this because God promised it. What he said he'll do. Ten were bad. We're good. God, in His grace, provided Israel's needs during that 40 year campsite they had. God provide, provided manna from above, didn't He? God had meat fall from the sky. Birds, whoop! Well, fry it up. I don't know if they fried it up, they ate it. And He used this time to prepare their hearts. To believe and receive God's word. If you would, look at Deuteronomy. Okay, Deuteronomy. And I want you to look at chapter 8. God made, gave so many provisions, folks, during this time. And yes, God is a righteous and holy judge, and He will bring those things to pass. 
But he's always extending mercy. He's always giving provision. And even during their rebellion, God gave provision. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, would you look at verse 2? And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did the fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. You need me, God says. You need to know me. You need to know that I will provide for you. And that when I say I'll take care of it, and when I say I'll take care of you, I mean what I say. Verse 4, thy raiment wax not old upon thee. Neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Folks. They had covering and clothes. And ladies, they had shoes. They didn't wear out. Would to God, belt legged could make stuff like that. Right? Or Walmart, somebody. God says, I'll take care of you. Incredible. Just miracle after miracle. Verse 5. Thou shalt, thou shalt also consider in thine heart... That as man chases, chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. I love that. Say what happens at the end of the 40 years in your handout. Their great leader Moses died in Moab. Moses dies. Look at Deuteronomy 34. Deuteronomy 34. Deuteronomy 34 and look at verses 1 through 5 if you would. We're quickly coming up on Joshua now. and The Bible says, And Moses went up from the plains of Moab... Now, you know the story here, and you, if you don't, Moses was not allowed to enter in the promised land, not just because he was over 20, but because he also disobeyed God. I want you to know that you might think that you get away with something with mankind, but God keeps a record. Nothing gets by God. Moses was told to get water from the rock. There was water from the rock. There was manna. There was, there was meat provided. And Moses smote the rock. He was mad. And God told him not to smite the rock. And he did it. And because he disobeyed God, God told him, you'll never enter into the promised land. Now here's a man who was called at 80 years old, his third, the third, his, his life was really broken down to thirds. The third part of his life, he was called to lead these people out of Egypt. Incredible. He wandered for 40 years with them and yet never saw the promised land. Or he did get to see it, excuse me, but he never got to enter it. God did allow him to see it. But here in verse 1, the Bible says that he went up from the mountains or plains of Moab and unto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah. That is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan and Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and unto the land of Judah and unto the utmost sea. And the south of the plain of the valley of Jericho and the city of palm trees unto Zor. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. 
So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Now, what's amazing here is that on the screen we've covered all of these things. We've started with creation, which we know Adam rebelled, Eve was deceived. Creation began, but it ended up in corruption. The ground was cursed. Satan was, 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 was cursed. And then we notice that man continued to be wicked. There was a catastrophe. That catastrophe was Noah and the flood. Man continued to be wicked. The only people that were saved was Noah and his family. He had 120 years to build the ark. After the ark landed, dry land came upon. After a year, they entered out. Mankind was told, or Moses and his family, or Noah, excuse me, to replenish the earth, multiply. They did that. Men continued to worship false gods, continued to do their own thing, built huge towers. As we know in Babylon, called the Tower of Babel, God calls confusion. There was one language on the earth at that time. God broke up all of that, and that's where all our dialects come from today. Then God called Abraham, and we notice that from Abraham, they end up going into slavery where they carry burdens for over 400 years. And then they camp out. We, that's what we just covered after leaving Egypt, being free in the wilderness. And now next is this, conquest. Say, what was the conquest? Well, in your handout, if you notice this, we're going to cover Joshua through 1 Samuel. We're going to talk about them possessing the land of Canaan. Now they possess it. What happens? What, who does God use? He uses people like Joshua and he uses great men like Samuel and he uses other judges to, to lead God's people. And, 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 but you'll also notice the events were Israel's occupation, but then he divides up the promised land. And you'll see that there's chaotic rule under the judges. God puts these men in charge. Not all of them are godly. Not all of them do what's right. And there becomes this vicious cycle once again. And man after man God uses. There's, there's this vicious cycle of men uh, turning their back from God. God brings them under to repentance. Restores fellowship with them. And they go right back into the cycle of sin. And to disobeying God. And, and, and then repentance. Then restored fellowship. And the cycle goes on and on. Folks, we have a long-suffering God. We have a very gracious God. Say, what happens? Well, there's an appointment of Joshua now, and we're in the book of Joshua. Say, what happens? Well, next week we'll tell you. Next week we'll tell you. You want to hear about con the conquest here and what happens We'll talk about the seven nations of Canaan. I'll show you a map where the twelve tribes of Israel are and what, where they're located. And uh, you'll get to see that on the, on the map. And uh, I wish I could print those out for you, but unfortunately that's just, it, it's so much ink. It doesn't, it just doesn't, they don't print well. And, uh, but the truth of the matter is you can go online and you can find these. There are some great resources, trusted resources, uh, that will help you look up these things if you're interested. But it, it, you know, they spent over 400 years in Egypt. And now it's 400 years since God called Abraham. And now we're at Joshua. It's been a lot of time that passed. But what you'll notice is that all through this, ministry doesn't rise and fall on a man. Even though God appoints people, even God right, right, uh, raises up leadership, you'll notice that God doesn't build ministry on men. He continues to want people to glorify Him, to look to Him. And what you see is that over and over, Man turns from God, 
rebels against God, but then God's right there to restore them into a right fellowship with Him, them, or Him to forgive them and to restore the nation. Incredible, over and over. So next week, we will talk about the conquest and how God uses men like Joshua and Samuel. Incredible. You'll, get, you'll love these, and I'll be sharing with you some typology, uh, typology that's in the Bible of redemption. You're going to see God's redemption here in the book of Joshua, and you're going to see how God uses this as a typology of his cross work that's to come. It's incredible. And so I trust that you'll come back next week, bring somebody with you so we can study the Word of God together. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for.